Hey guys, it's been a while. Um, I'm here to tell you how to modify your MR16 DDT or Juke or Clio or as I've been saying since the beginning of the series, whatever you got this engine in. So today we're going to be talking about intercoolers. Um, I know the efficiency video I did a couple videos ago kind of degraded into a talk about intercoolers. Um, and I actually was reserving all that topic for this video, but we're going to go in a different direction. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of intercooler sizes. So if you want to talk about uh, the difference between side mount and front mount, which is more efficient, you can go ahead and check out the efficiency video, and that kind of covers all that. So in this video, we're going to talk about how the size of the intercooler, along with the location of the intercooler, affects uh, how your turbocharger performs. So basically, your intercooler, is what cools the air that goes into your engine after it goes through your turbocharger. As air compresses, it gets hotter, your turbocharger is hot, those compressor blades create heat, they heat up the air, the compression heats up the air. So you gotta cool it down with the intercooler. Now your standard size intercooler um, is designed from the factory to work. It's designed to be mass produced cheap, it's designed to maintain a certain threshold that the, the factory deems acceptable. Um, and it's not really made for much of that. So if you're looking to get performance out of your car, uh, typically the factory setup is just not going to work. It's, it's pretty close to being maxed out as far as flow rates go and as far as effectiveness goes. So you're going to want to change your intercooler. So we, again, efficiency video, we discussed why that is. Let's, let's, let's talk about size of intercooler. Now if you're going to maintain a side mount factory location intercooler on this car, you know, that is your choice. As I mentioned in the efficiency video, it's not the best. There are a couple of options out there. There's uh, two different options actually out there. I'm not going to start naming names. It's just not what I do here. They're bigger, so they will flow more air. Yes. They're made out of better aluminum, so they will cool better. Yes. Is it better than stock? Yes. Is it best to make horsepower on? No. The factory intercooler location does allow you to run minimal amount of plumbing with an air-to-air -air intercooler, um, so it's going to reduce the amount of air that your turbocharger has to compress in order to make actual boost pressure. Uh, so that's, that is a, a plus side on that. Now because of where the factory intercooler location is, you're kind of stuck in a certain set dimension as far as width goes. So what they do with the aftermarket ones is they make them deeper. Now deeper is good, um, it's, it's more area uh, that can absorb cool air coming from the wind, uh, it's more uh, area to increase the flow rate, the amount of air that can actually get through the intercooler. Um, so it, it is helpful in that sense. Um, the only downside with being thicker and where it is, is the back side of the intercooler, if it's not receiving a good amount of airflow, is going to heat soak a lot faster. So say you're sitting at an idle for 20 minutes for some reason, and when you start driving, it's going to take that little extra time for the intercooler to cool down the back of it as compared to the front makes it not as efficient, but if you're driving around, it's going to you know, be pretty uniform across front and back in that lower part that is getting cooled. A side mount intercooler can't be too big, like I said, you're very limited in your dimensions by where it is, so the size whole thing, we're not really going to talk about with that. When we get into front mount intercoolers, you can have too big of a front mount intercooler. Uh, there's a reason that, let's just say for instance Mishimoto, there's a reason Mishimoto, even Garrett, uh, makes different size intercoolers. It's not a one size fits all kind of deal. You need to look at your turbocharger, you need to look at your total flow rate, uh, you need to look at the amount of plumbing you're going to be running, you have to figure out the best size intercooler for your car. You also have to look at your boost pressure you're thinking about running, um, the horsepower range. So let's take the Mishimoto Z-Line intercooler uh, for instance. That intercooler is rated to 20 PSI where it's effective. So when you're at 20 PSI, no matter what size turbo you have, you're kind of at the top of its effective cooling range, meaning it can't flow the CFM through it enough to cool the air. Instead, that air is going to kind of sit there and it's going to warm up the cooler and you're going to start to have the opposite effect that you want out of an intercooler and the air temps are going to go up. To get around that, if you're running 20 PSI and that intercooler seems a little too small, then you go to the next size up. Um, that intercooler is rated to, to whatever, um, but you have to start looking at the negatives of doing that. Is it worth it going to a bigger intercooler if you're A, not getting full flow to the intercooler? If you look at the front end of a Juke or a Pulsar, you only have about that much air that's coming through that front bumper. 
And if you start putting intercooler above that, you're going to have the same problem you have with the factory intercooler where air that's going through there isn't actually getting cooled down, it's actually heating up the aluminum and now the bottom has to make up for that. Um, a lot of you are running a factory turbo, so that's really not the biggest deal um, because you're not making enough horsepower to where you're going to make so much heat that you're going to just make this intercooler just hot. But you also have to look at it this way. If you're running your factory turbo, that huge area, you're talking about you know something this big, now this little turbo has to fill that space before it actually starts building boost pressure. Uh, and that creates pretty much turbo lag. It's going to be a couple hundred more extra RPM until you hit your peak boost level. And most people won't feel that, especially in the factory turbo because it does spool up so damn quick because it's so small. But at the same time, you're overworking your turbo. Your turbo is now having to spin faster to create the same amount of boost pressure that it normally does. So there are intercoolers that are too big. Now, if you're running a big turbo like what we've been running on our builds, um, you can pretty much take an intercooler that's good for, say, we're building a car that's 500 horsepower, get an intercooler that's good to 600, so you have that little extra room, throw it in there, you're pretty much going to be okay. You're going to need all of that. The only restriction, again, is that maximum airflow. Uh, the Juke that we just built that did 331 horsepower, the intercooler we put on there is actually way too big for the front end, so we kind of modified the bumper a little bit so we could sit even more of it down so there's only a smaller amount that's not getting airflow. So basically, we maximize the amount of airflow that we're getting out of that, which is what you need to do. So if you're on the factory turbo, the recommendation is you shouldn't be running over 20 PSI anyway. We're going to get to that when we start talking about actual turbochargers in a few episodes. If you you shouldn't be running over 20 PSI, then you don't need anything much bigger than this, just for a size reference. Uh, you shouldn't need anything much bigger than a Z-Line intercooler. If you're running more than 20 pounds of boost, you're way overworking the entire system as it is. So if you put a bigger intercooler on there, you're going to be overworking that turbo even more. You're going to be affecting the life of the turbo because the bearings are now going to wear out faster. So your intercooler is a lot more important than most people think. You, you really have to take into consideration what you're doing with the car. If you drive the car around every day on a factory tune or even just a, you know, a, a mild tune where you're running 15, 20 more horsepower, you don't need this big intercooler. If you're trying to run 30 pounds of boost through the factory turbo, you're going to need a big intercooler because you're going to need to flow that air. And, and that's kind of the, the big thing. So there are, there are intercoolers that are way too big for this car. Like way too big for all the reasons that I just mentioned. If you want to make your own intercooler, I did a whole video on how to do that. If you order all the parts yourself, you can do the whole intercooler for under 250 bucks. It's a tested method. I run the exact setup on my car. Um, I've installed it on a couple of my local friends' cars. Um, when I had Mass RP, I used to sell basically the same kit. We did 267 all-wheel horsepower on one with a big turbo, actually this size turbo right here. Um, it was way at the top of that intercooler's effectiveness, so it did need to go a little bigger, but it did it. Um, I mean, it's, it works. There's no need to run a bigger intercooler than that if you're on a factory turbo or if you're under 250 horsepower, really if you're under 300 horsepower. Uh, this car doesn't need that much boost to be safe. So that's all I've got to say on that topic. Tell me in the comments below what you're running on your car. Is it a factory intercooler? Do you want to upgrade your intercooler? Are you running a mass RP intercooler? What are you, what are you running on your car? I'd love to know, so make sure you put that in the comments below. And as always, have a good day. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you go check out the new website we have up, thefastreligion.com. You can get all kinds of merch, decals, and you can also read more about the builds we're doing. In the meantime, why don't you check out these other cool videos that we have going on, and make sure you hit that subscribe button.